Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go to Zmini Island where Russia lost one of their ships today. This was the ship of Project 22870, the name Vasily Beh and we have confirmed information even from Russian side that it was destroyed and probably Ukraine used Harpen rockets for that one. You may say that it's just a small size uh, supply ship but my friends it was delivering the tour anti-aircraft missiles to Zmini Island and it was hit on the way. We actually have some video about it. This is the video, it is kind of bad quality my friends and I hope you can see the silhouette of the ship over there and here the rocket camps towards it and here we go with the blast. Harpoon rockets uh, were used to fire to the ship and there comes one more rocket so we used two rockets for uh, each target were tagged on a sea. As you know, the Moskva ship was destroyed also using two rockets, not Harpoon but Neptune. And of course, this one just sank down together with the military equipment, maybe some of the soldiers that were on board. Uh, that's what we do, we protect our land and Zmini also is Ukrainian territory, the Snake Island, we call it Zmini Island. Why Russia is so goal-oriented to put the military on the Snake Island? Well, actually, after they lost the Moskva ship, they don't have the S-300 systems on other ships and they need to put them at least to the Snake Island to provide security for their marine fleet. Without the air defense we can easily target their ships using our Minx and Suhoys that we have and also we have Bayraktars. So that's the only way how they can protect themselves there. We don't know the exact position of where this ship was destroyed. It was on the way to the Snake Island somewhere here and we put Harpoon rockets on the coastline of Ukraine controlled territory and as you can see we still control lots of uh, the parts here and there it's around 250 kilometers of the coastline. Sometimes I got the question about what is this? This is the Moskva ship my friends that sank down. The ship that I got today on my t-shirt. <laughs> Alright, and now let's return to our military map, my friends. Let's go to the Kharkiv, where the situation is without changes for nearby days. And Russia put the forces here and they were able to connect themselves on the north. But we provide huge defense on the north part. There is no way they will take Kharkiv. That's what I want to say about the north part. Let's go a little bit to the south. I was very concerned about this place that could be surrounded by Russians, could be circled, but Russians were not able to cross uh, the river over here. This river of Siversky Donets really does great job in holding Russians on the eastern part of Ukraine and not only as you can see. If we go to Svetohirsk, my friends, Russia was able to put the forces uh, here and also near to Bogorodichne. Actually, they crossed this river near to Izum uh, over here, my friends. And now they're performing their attack from this side because they already crossed the river and they want to take Bogorodichne uh, city or the town. So they want to take it under their control and take this road and they want to go on their attack from Bogorodichne position and also probably from this position on this road and through those uh, that forest or the woods towards Slovansk, my friends. And also they captured Liman and now want to cross this river, but I give you like 70% that they will be unsuccessful in crossing the river and from information I got we put lots of traps on the way to uh, Slavansk here to the Radio Gordok and I don't know my friends about the information uh, about those bridges the railway bridge and the road bridge and also have the dam here if you blast out this dam uh, actually it it will not damage the environment over here because the level of the river here is mostly the same. There is no big water storage unlike in Kherson, for example. So could be there could be that we can destroy this dam, probably if they will try to use it to cross the river. But if you just destroy the bridges, there is no way for the fast counterattack, then you'll have enough weapons. So firstly you need to shell the artillery and go with your troops, with the soldiers, 
how would you go very fast if there is no any bridge around so for sure it's better of course to secure bridges and keep russians away from the river itself from what i see we are doing that stuff right now from slavensk let's go to the eastern part of ukraine it's the major hot spot for now the hottest fights are ongoing near to the Severodonetsk and Lysychansk and also near to Papasna. First let's speak about Papasna because uh, according to the latest information Russia put the forces uh, again towards the Bahmut and they also want to take this road that is leading to the Bahmut under their control and they push from different directions mostly as you see here the red arrows those are the vectors of their attacks and i thought that they stop offensive towards bahmut but they continue if they take bahmut they can cut both of the main roads that are leading to lysychansk so they will cut off the supply lines for ukrainian army it's very bad so far i see that we are still holding zolote uh, I'm very surprised about it. I thought we should uh, retreat from this position very very soon But I see around five days after Russia put their forces uh, In Kamushevaha was able to capture the vast part of this village We are still in Zolota and Katerinovka Also my friends that we are able to hold in these hard circumstances as well as we hold in Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. The Severodonetsk is mostly under Russian control but still uh, the factory uh, the industrial area is under control by Ukrainian troops and here is the part of the city I think 20% around is under control by Ukrainians as well my friends if we go to the south there is no change uh, here more to the south no change here near to Kherson I can see some change Russia pushes towards uh, towards Mikhailov again we had the successful counter-attack but they were able to capture Alexandrovka once again Alexandrovka was under Ukrainian control just recently a couple of days ago and now they push towards it again you may call it some sort of the bad news and Russia of course they have uh, more resources than Ukraine they have superiority in their artillery aviation and that is why they have some tactical advantage and they are able to take some ground here and there but if we speak about the general perspective if we look at the situation as whole ukraine is winning this war my friends every day of this war is a big minus for russia and tiny little minus for ukraine we are fighting for our land we will have supplies from our western allies and of course we are gonna fight back where very soon i expect probably next month we're gonna start some kind of counterattacks firstly in Kherson, then in Kharkiv and after all on the eastern part of the front lines but we gonna do it no matter what and Russia knows that now we don't have enough weapons and they start to push hard they put all of their resources they still do not announce the massive mobilization but they do what they can in this situation to take more ground they still think that we can give up our land for the peaceful talks but no our government our president all they say that we will continue to fight until we're gonna drive russians away from the all occupied territories now they say including crimea and including uh, so-called dnr and lnr donetsk and lugansk republics but some say at least at the borders of the 24th uh, february this year uh, ukrainian people will never accept russian rule over ukraine my friends we're gonna fight with weapons without weapons but we're gonna fight for our freedom we are who we are we are free people we don't need russia here with their laws with their restrictions and with their russian peace my friends i'll keep you updated about the situation here in ukraine now please press the like also if you can you may support my channel of the links in the video description just below for those of you who support me my friends you are awesome and part of the money of course i spend for the charity to help ukrainian people i wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are have a great time.